So today I want to talk about Ted Cruz fleeing from Texas, the state he represents in the federal government, and traveling down to Cancun, Mexico. And I want to cover this from a few different perspectives. First, I want to talk about what transpired and the amount of disconnect that Ted Cruz has from the reality of most people in his state. Second, I want to talk about leadership because we live in a government with representation and leaders, and I want to talk about what an actual leader should be doing and what leadership should look like if we have to have it in comparison to what Ted Cruz has, well, not been doing. Finally, I want to talk about mutual aid and people coming together in crisis and how politicians have not been the reason for why so many lives have been saved and protected during this particular crisis in Texas. So what actually happened in the situation with Ted Cruz? By now, I'm sure you're familiar with what's transpired in Texas and the fact that their power grid has failed. If not, I covered it on a video a few days ago, and you can use that video if you'd like to acquaint yourself with the full story. I will link it in the description down below. So with that out of the way, after spending two days in the cold without power in a home, where Ted Cruz had a working fireplace and presumably plenty of safe products to burn without the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning or any real threats or dangers. Ted Cruz and his daughters had a conversation in which his daughters, according to Cruz, asked him to go travel someplace warm. So Ted Cruz, trying to be a good father, according to him, booked a flight against CDC guidelines and took his family down to Mexico. The irony, of course, being that Ted Cruz is a huge proponent of preventing people from Mexico from fleeing their country and coming into the United States, but has no issue doing the exact opposite and fleeing Texas during a blizzard to go down to Mexico to enjoy one of their hotels and luxury situations. So, you know, taking advantage of the warmth is perfectly reasonable for Ted Cruz in that particular moment. So this got leaked. Uh, Ted Cruz was seen at the airport. Social media blew up. A lot of news outlets were talking about it. And Ted Cruz was questioned as to why he left and abandoned Texas, which honestly is a really good question to be asking of a politician during a major disaster. So after getting caught, he flew back and has been backpedaling since, claiming that he had, uh, you know, that he was going to return sooner than what his return ticket originally was scheduled for, which was sometime on the weekend, that he was planning to, uh, you know, come back earlier because he was really thinking about it. And I'm going to be real with you. I don't buy that. I think he got caught. And I think that he responded to getting caught and is trying to weasel his way out of taking responsibility. So, you know, he claimed he was also going to work remotely down there and fix things and he needed to come back and do everything in person. And again, I'm just not buying this whole sob story from Ted Cruz. Though within all of his, um, statement, I want to highlight one section of it because I think it speaks to pretty much all of the problems inherent in his arguments. So he says, look, it was obviously a mistake. In hindsight, I wouldn't have done it. I was trying to be a dad and all of us have made decisions. When you got two girls who have been cold for two days and haven't had the heat or power and they're saying, hey, look, we don't have school. Why don't we go? Let's get out of here. I think there are a lot of parents that would be like, if I can do this, great. That's what I wanted to do. So I have a number of problems with this. This statement exemplifies just how disconnected he is from the reality of his own constituents. So first and foremost, I just need to get this out of there. He threw his daughters under the bus with this and blamed them for this. His daughters might have been the ones to ask, but he made the conscious choice to decide to leave and to buy the ticket and to make that choice. And as a politician, I don't think that's something that is excusable. Um, as a matter of fact, I just think it's a terrible excuse and it speaks to his weaseliness to shift the focus onto his daughters and be like, oh, I was just being a good dad. When in reality, 
he probably left because he was uncomfortable too and wanted to go down to where it was warm, and he had the privilege and opportunity to do so. Hey everyone, Future Terra here. So as it turns out, uh, there were some text messages leaked from one of Ted Cruz's or Ted Cruz's wife's friends that actively showed that we had reason to doubt him and his story about his daughters. Uh, it turns out that this kind of trip was planned for a few days and they were planning to go through the weekend until things thawed out. And they were trying to get the friends to come along with them that they were staying with and were in a quite warm and safe situation with said friends. There's no indication that the children were involved at all, and I just wanted to add that update, and we can continue on with the video. Thanks. Which speaks to the next point. There's a lot of privilege inherent in this statement, both of class and wealth and status, and him being a politician, who has the ability, again against CDC guidelines, to travel down to Cancun of all places while he leaves everyone else in his state to suffer. And the even the idea that his two children could just be like, hey dad, I don't feel like uh, you know, being in the cold anymore. Um, can can we go somewhere warm? Can we travel? The fact that that was even an option for his children is so drastically dis just separate and distinct from the realities of most people. You know, no, a lot of people, I'm sure, would have liked to have just gotten out of there, but they couldn't because they live there, because they're stuck there, because they don't have the financial means to. And it wouldn't have even occurred to most people who are trying to survive in this storm to think, oh, well, I could just get a flight out of here. And the fact that his children thought that just extends that even further down. And again, it's just a disconnect from the average person. And he, you know, must recognize this on some level himself, because he even says, if I can do this, great, which even implies that he knows that other people can't. And so I have to ask, you know, does Ted Cruz think that most of the people in his state wouldn't have wanted to leave those horrible conditions? I'm sure tons of parents want that. They want the cold conditions to end. They want heating in their homes, which is why you as a politician need to stay and ensure that people get that and do the job that you were put in place for. And I just need to remind people that he can't just go abandon people. And I mean, he clearly just did, but he shouldn't be allowed to abandon people that are in his state and just do whatever they want when you have a, pro a problem and a situation to fix. And his job is to be a politician. He is paid for this. And I get that as a senator, he represents the state federally, not necessarily on a local or state level. But I just need to point it out that if, can you imagine if Ted Cruz, for example, ran a business and one of his employees said, I know we just had like a disaster in the company and something really terrible happened and we're having a financial crisis and everyone might lose their jobs, but you know, I'm going to take a weekend off. Can you imagine how quick that employee would just be fired and probably be denied unemployment benefits? He is truly that disconnected from the reality of his constituents. And this is not someone who deserves to be in a leadership role. And speaking of leadership roles, what Ted Cruz has done in all of this amounts to practically nothing. I have tried to look up sources in the news. I have followed Ted Cruz's Twitter, and he has done nothing. And just to show you what his Twitter looks like right now, this is approximately one in the morning on the day of the upload, Friday, um, Eastern Time, 1 a.m., on February 19th. So just so we are getting an up-to-date thing, Ted Cruz has posted a video in which he talked about backpedaling uh, from his Cancun travel, another video where he very briefly talks about this situation without really saying anything, and then backpedals again with his Cancun situation. You have him praising R Rush Limbaugh and as we go through, there's these just little 
things that don't really say anything. Oh, don't use a carbon monoxide based device. Like don't use an oven or whatever, but there's no alternatives here. There's no actual care. There's no actual help. And this is the absolute bare minimum that he could do. Then I want to show you what his political opponent in the most recent election, uh, Beto O'Rourke has been posting since. Everything here on his Twitter has been, thank you for volunteers who have made phone calls, organizing phone calls. And furthermore, and I will just jump to this very quickly since it's here, he was thanking AOC. Yeah, that AOC, the AOC that Ted Cruz does not get along with, the same Ted Cruz that AOC has accused of being partially responsible for the January 6th insurrection, that same AOC helped raise a million dollars for Texas relief, for Texan uh, food assistance, homeless relief, elder care, and more. I didn't see any of this from Ted Cruz. This is a politician, a House of Representative member from New York, the same House of Representative member who has come out for unions, has organized mutual aid network programs, has uh, done union organizing seminars, has organized child care collectives in her own community, has taken care of her constituents, has now come out and basically shamed Ted Cruz and every single Texas politician who has done nothing. But getting back to Beto O'Rourke, again, this is the person who lost to Ted Cruz by only a few points, a very slim margin, and is not technically a politician nor responsible for any people or constituents right now. He's organized stuff. He's promoted mutual aid networks, um, threat of resources and RGV, uh, those without power, food, etc. Feel free to add. P uh, helping come up with lists and using his platform as a leader, as someone who has been on that political stage before, to shout out these organizations and what is needed. Henderson County Resources, Panhandle Resources, RGV Resources, uh, Information in Spanish which is important because let's not forget that a lot of people in Texas speak Spanish. There are a lot of Spanish speaking people in Texas. And I didn't see anything of this. And instead we have praising Rush Limbaugh going off on Ted Cruz's Twitter. And it just goes on and on and on. We're only 13 hours back and it's still constant posting, constant posting. How to get help uh, with the winter storm with power outages. And so this is someone who is working hard in their own way to try to be a leader and is speaking out against the issues. And these posts have been consistent over the past two to three days. So with that said, that is what I believe a leader should be doing in these situations. And now that we've seen some examples of leadership, let's take it a step further and talk about mutual aid. Now, Ted Cruz has claimed that we need to investigate why it is that the power grid in Texas failed and the state legislature needs to look into that and all that stuff. The whole disaster is well known at this point. We can look for individuals to blame and I'm sure they'll find their individuals to throw under the bus, but the issue is one of capitalism and the state mutually failing people. For for-profit models, disincentivize the winterizing of equipment, the idea and concept of deregulation, disallowed for the state to merge into the rest of the national grid in order to have some sort of idea of, um, you know, Texas being by itself and, you know, whatever that whole posturing is supposed to be about. And in the end of the day, the state chose to back all this up. And who suffered for this? People. It was people who are suffering, people who are losing power and are cold and are, you know, in these rough situations. And it is people who are dying. The state and politicians like Ted Cruz chose for and allowed for this to happen. They have created the conditions on the ground for all of this to be much worse than it has to be. A storm in general is dangerous. People still might die, even in the best of circumstances. But capitalism has made it that much worse. The state backing these particular forms of capitalism has made things a lot worse. And that needs to be said. And who has come to the aid to fix the problem? 
people. It hasn't been the state. It hasn't been the politicians. And, you know, as much as even uh, someone like Beto O'Rourke has come out and done what he's done, it has not been politicians who have done the bulk of the work. Some of them have taken roles to help, like I showed with AOC and Beto. But, you know, that doesn't mean they're the ones actually fixing things. As a matter of fact, we see that in Austin, Texas, volunteers work through their own struggles to put 400 people in shelters and provide over 500 meals. Austin Mutual Aid founder and volunteer coordinator Bobby Cooper was out picking up people and transporting them to shelters all day on Tuesday, despite experiencing difficulties at his own house due to its freezing temperatures. It's extremely difficult for not just me, but all the drivers, Cooper said. A lot of us live in neighborhoods that are un, um, underserved by the city, so we've lost, lost power too. And that's the thing. The city failed here. The states have failed here. The system failed. And volunteers are collecting donations of blankets, coats, non-perishable foods, and people are organizing these structures in Austin in this case, but in all other parts of Texas, I'm sure, to try to gather resources and materials for those in need and share them equivalently. And as this person, um, as some of these people go on to say, uh, this one person with the last name Garcia, Jose Garcia, um, whatever we're doing here is going to be like a band-aid. This is a systemic problem. We're trying to do more than just make food. It's setting an example for other people to do the same. And again, this is someone who uh, makes arepas and they worked with volunteers to cook fresh meals for people and families who have been, you know, calling in with requests to help. And outside of that, uh, you have all of these different mutual aid networks. There's one that's in Austin, you have ones in Dallas, you have ones in Houston, San Antonio, and as this website points out, consider lending support to mutual aid networks or other community groups that serve smaller cities, as they likely haven't received outpouring of support that the larger efforts like these ones have. Unfortunately, there isn't an extensive database that lists all of these mutual aid efforts across the state. Instead, you'll have to do some digging around on social media or see if local community organizers or groups have recommendations. There are food banks running, and they are running at, you know, as best they can. And you even have calls for, again, volunteering at warming centers, lending transportation, and people generally just coming together. This is what fixes crisis situations like this. Because right now, it's not the city who's out there. It's not the politicians. It's certainly not the police forces that are out there. It is these mutual aid networks that are coming out and trying to do the best they can for people. And it will always be people who do for each other first. And, you know, I just need to point out with all of this before I go on, people wouldn't be out there risking their lives for people who might be homeless and not have food to the same extent if we didn't have a homeless, if we, you know, if people had homes, if there wasn't a homelessness problem. And where does that problem come from? It comes from capitalism. It comes from housing not being a right. Would we have as many people being worried about their medications? And, you know, if you have, say, insulin, which requires refrigeration, that might not be safe right now because your refrigerator shut down because the power's out. Would we have as many people going through that situation if we had proper health care? Would we, in a system that prioritized having the pipes properly heated and all of these things taken care of, first and foremost, where people came over profit and we worried about the actual details of a person's life over whether or not we want to spend a few more cents on our electric bills in this system, in capitalism, I think people would be better off. We have to start calling this into question because these systems perpetuate it. And that's that many less people who would be putting themselves at risk having to drive people and that many less people who would have to be going out trying to serve meals and getting people who are homeless to shelters. This is ridiculous. The amount of hotels I've heard people are paying for and, you know, stuff. If we existed in a non money-based economy with all the resources we had, we as people could come together in this way. And so, given all of this, I have to question, as an anarchist, why we even need 
politicians and capitalism. Because all of this work that you've just seen, that's anarchist work. That is anarchy. That is what the end goal of anarchy is. It is people banding together, not even needing the money and all of the donations, but just being able to have the resources on hand to be able to share and commune with each other when these type of disasters strike. And beforehand to make sure safety and precautions are in place so that we have less loss of life during disasters. I'm not saying it'll prevent everything. I'm not saying it'll be a perfect system, but it'll certainly be better than this. And, you know, even if you're someone who isn't quite ready to make the leap to where I'm advocating for and, you know, these systems and you still want to hold on to maybe the government or some sort of politics, at the very least, you need to recognize that people like Ted Cruz represent a form of leadership that flees and runs from problems and denies responsibility instead of coming to people's aid. If we're to continue in this representative system in any way, shape, or form, and again, I would much rather go to a system where we eliminate, eventually, politicians and capitalism and actually just come to each other's aid instead of skipping all these steps and letting politicians just make things worse. Let's just come to each other's aid in all of this. But if we have to have this representative system, people like Ted Cruz, who use their position of power and privilege to flee instead of taking charge to save lives who are more worried about rush limbaugh dying than their own constituents suffering and being in cold inclement weather those people need to go and we need to shift towards leaders that actually care and actually want progressive policies that are going to make sure that these things stop happening so with that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter and check out my Discord in the description down below. My name is Anarchist Tara, and I hope you enjoyed watching.